Today we're making a basic quilt from old t-shirts. This is a fun way to keep those memories top of mind even if the garment is no longer in your wardrobe's rotation. Hey, it's Becky, and for this special edition, my mom will show us her process for creating these handmade keepsakes. If you're new to quilting, this is a great way to get started. A portion of this video is sponsored by Imprint. The first step was to go through my wardrobe and identify sentimental pieces I was not likely to wear again. Then we folded them into rectangles and arranged them on the floor to create the design of the quilt. We were going for an even distribution of colors without having two similar designs next to each other. Don't forget to get some help from your furry friends. So and free. Once we had decided on a composition, we took a photo to reference later on and labeled and stacked each column of shirts to carry out to the quilting studio. Here, mom's measuring the shirts and recording the dimensions of the usable portion of each one. All right, I'm gonna cut this one straight down the sleeve, not like what I normally do because this is so narrow and if I wanna make it wider, I can include some of the sleeves. Normally I would cut off the sleeves at this stage, but I'm not doing that now. When people have t-shirt quilts made and send them off like to an Etsy shop, this is exactly what they have to do before they send them. The people that are working on the quilts don't want the backs of the shirts to come with them. So the interfacing is 20 inches wide, and so I just cut the length. I take these, this pile of shirts and I put them here. So I know that this one has to be 13 and this one has to be 18. So I'll cut 13. And I'll cut them all the way across, but I'll cut them like this. And then I put this one with this shirt. So after we cut the interfacing for the backs of the shirts, we wanna iron it on before we actually cut the shirts to make sure that the interfacing goes all the way to the edge of the square. And the interfacing is not stretchy, but the fabric might be. The fabric is stretchy and this stabilizes it, although this stretches a little. And that's good because then it's not too stiff when you have the finished, finished quilt. The, um, and it irons on rather than sewing on because then it's adhering to the back and it'll take any shape that you need it to be. And in this case, Well, it also adds block. structure to, if we have a really thin shirt, it Correct. adds some structure to, that, and this gluey stuff Right. Helps make it so that shirt's gonna like last longer. That's correct. The quilt, right? That's correct. And then when the when the squares get sewn together, or the blocks they're not all gonna be square. When they get sewn together, then then this is actually even more stable. And then when it gets quilted all the way through, then it's all because the know. seam is the least stable part of the whole thing. And when it you is. have this in the seam, that's it's it also helps taking the strain off of correct. The that's correct, it all helps to stabilize everything. So then it's easier to sew together after the fact. We've cut the interfacing to be the length that we're ultimately gonna cut and a little extra so that we can iron it on and then cut it to the, the size that we want the, the block to be. Um, so it's a little bit oversized and that's okay because we'd rather cut some of it away than try to piece it on later. The problem with trying to match it up exactly is that if you miss, it gets stuck to the ironing board or it gets stuck to the iron and it's better to do it when you have the whole, the whole thing. One of the things that I'm trying to do when I make these blocks is be consistent with how wide they are. And some of the shirts are very narrow and, they, and included in cutting them consistently, they will have to include part of the, um, the sleeves part of the sleeves. So it might be hard to see on the black, but when I'm ironing, I'm, I try really hard on these narrow ones to make sure that the seam of the sleeve is as flat as it can be. So when I put the interfacing on there, we don't have a lot of like creases and you know, so that it can become part of the cut. So this is the interfacing. <clears throat> I need to make sure that I don't put it too high on the back because I want like the, the width isn't gonna work up here above the shoulder 
So I'll put that in there and space it in between there. And then this just irons on. And when I get over no here to... Steam, right? There's no no steam. No, you don't want any steam because the the moisture stretches everything and you want it to not, not be and stretching. This iron is a dry iron. There's no way to put water in it. So it's only dry, which is what very good for quilts because you don't want the steam to change it. Now over here, you'll see that this is wider than the shirt. And so I'm like really careful to make sure that I only press where the shirt is. And that's going to be cut away later anyway, so it doesn't matter that it's overlapping. So I've determined that 14 inch wide is, is the way to go, but the first thing we're going to do is cut the length. And the way I do that is this ruler has a little edge on it to catch on the top. Like and he's right where I need to be. Kind of like a T-square, yes. Yeah. And a lot well, of times, right a lot of times we find, as in the case of this, that you think when you're wearing the shirt that these are straight, and then you iron the interfacing on, and you find out that it's all kind of catty wampus. Catty wampus, good word. So what I try to do is find a place. Like I'm going to try to make this crew, the word crew, be relatively straight on the on the fabric. And I I tend to use the lines lines on lines to make sure that I've got it, you know, covered on Aligning top and bottom. The line on your ruler to the line on To the, the line on the mat, okay. yes, top and bottom to try to make it as straight as I can. Okay, so now that I have it lined up straight here, I'm gonna cut the top first. So now the whole thing is straight on my cutting board, my cutting mat. And I'm gonna pick a spot. It's really a little bit random where you pick, but try to make a, a spot that's going to be at least 14 inches wide because that's where I'm going to ultimately cut it in the other direction. And then take my rotary cutter, which is very sharp. <laughs> Don't cut yourself. And cut along here. And you, if you're really serious <coughs> about safety, you don't leave it. You, you close the blade whenever you, you set it down. You do that as soon as you set it down. Yeah. That's correct. Because then when you're going like this, you don't accidentally like punch the edge of your rotary cutter with your hand. Which I've done. Yep, me too. Many times. That's why you leave it closed as soon as That is correct. Now, when we, when we were measuring at a previous step and we wrote down all of the numbers, um, we decided that this one was going to be 16 inches long. So I measure from here. And your mat is, has one inch squares. My yeah. mat has one inch squares. So I can either count the number of squares or I can just put this ruler on here and learn that 16 is here. So I'm going to cut this at 16 inches. So now we got the length the way we want to, but I'm going to have to, I'll probably go back and put a strip of interfacing in, on the back when this is done. Then we turn it the other way and we want it to be 14 inches. So what I do in order to figure out where the 14 inches are and where the centering is going to be, it's the same thing. I'll, I've lined this up on a line, any line, doesn't matter. And we can like roughly center it because of the crew logo there and that looks pretty. Right, but what I do is I actually measure. So the crew logo is six inches wide and so I mark where the, the center is of the six inches of the logo. And then I want this thing to be 14 inches wide. So I move my ruler over to the seven. So now seven is the center. And then I put a pin over here. At zero and 14. I don't have to put one at zero because if I cut it here, then I can measure 14 okay. from there. But to make sure that it's centered so that there's not too much mm -hmm. black on one side and not on the other side. And then what I do is I try to take this and kind of put the ruler on the pin and then move it over so that I'm on a line because it's just easier to measure later. Just make sure that the, where the pin goes into the fabric is right on the line. Mm -hmm. And this isn't an exact science, so if it was, you know, I mean, it's, it has to be exact 14 inches, but if it's tiny bit off center, it doesn't really matter too much. But we try to get it centered. So even though I have the design in the center, when I cut this at 13 in order to get the whole thing to be 14 inches, I have a a sleeve on this side, and you'll see that the sleeve was cut mm -hmm. off this side, right. which is fine, but it's a, it's a judgment call on whether you want to have them symmetrical, meaning the same or amount centered. of sleeve, or the design centered. Uh, this, so. The sleeve is, the seam is very minimal compared to the logo, so yes. I would actually have the logo centered. In I think, and I, do, and I do most of the time, or sometimes I try to strike a balance in between. So in this case, I'm going to try to cut as close to the neckline as I can without cutting the neckline, because I don't want to deal with the extra bulk of the seam. And it looks to me like I have this now lined up like a half an inch in. And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't always have to measure right on the line. Right now, I'm putting the line on top of the half-inch mark. 
but it's the same, you know, it's straight and the same thing, just cut. And now I'm just barely missing that collar and that's what I want to do because then I still have the interfacing up that high and it's on the back. And then this one, it's got to be 15 inches long. So I do this just to see if it looks okay and it does. It looks like it's pretty balanced right up mm -hmm. to the edges. So, so I would like leave it like that and then try to cut it to the 14 inches. And I know that I'm trying to make them all 14 inches. That's standard. And then, you know, the different lengths and this one is cut at 15, which we already did. And so now I'm gonna, now again, I'm gonna line it up on a line just cause it's easier for me to count than it is to remember the half. <laughs> okay. okay, so I'm gonna try to pin this whole row together. And it's important to, to put a good number of pins because even though there's interfacing, the whole thing might wanna stretch on you when you're sewing it. So it's better to, to pin it in like, you know, four or five different places on a seam this big. The good news about the shirts, the t-shirts, is that there's usually extra fabric, you know, around the design. So if you do make a mistake and cut one a half an inch too big, you can cut it off, you know. But to try to, I try to, you know, measure two or three times and then cut once. So now that we have these pinned together, the squares are pinned together to form a row, we're gonna take these upstairs to my sewing studio and sew them together. Follow me. All right, I'm gonna sew these using a half inch seam, which is not the same as what you do for cotton quilt, but it's good for the t-shirts the to give it a little extra seam length. And my presser foot happens to be set at a half an inch. And it's very important to do your little few back stitches at the end of these uh, rows because they have a tendency to separate when the uh, threads get trimmed very close and then you have them they peel apart. The and the knits are like extra and stretchy stuff and to, yeah. Yes, that's correct. So I'm gonna press these seams open, which is also different from your traditional quilting. The reason for this is because the t-shirt material is already thicker than what um, cotton would be. And when you're quilting, it's a lot easier. The flatter the quilt top when you're finished, the better. So you, gonna... you iron seams to the side when you do cotton when you quilt do tops? cotton quilting, you put them to the side. Really? Yep, you know why? I'll tell you why. Yeah, why? Oh, because so a lot of people, a lot of know. people like to do what's called stitch in the ditch when they're quilting, which they go just right down the right. stitching line. Right, and they wouldn't and be even stitching over any fabric. They'd be stitching over no fabric. That's exactly right. They'd only be stitching over the thread. So I it's see. important in that case that you iron the seam to one side. And actually it works for the corners of quilts too. If you iron the seam to one side on one panel and then to the other side, when you get to the corner, you've only got half the... Then the corners end up less, but less thick. So after we get done sewing all of these seams, this is the last one, right? And yeah. then when you quilt, but when you quilt this, you don't you don't stitch in the ditch. You stitch all over the place. You stitch all over the place. That's correct. So that's and another. You, and there's no reason to stitch in the ditch because it's just between the. Yeah. When you stitch in the ditch on traditional quilting, you're trying to emphasize certain shapes. The pattern. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you just you know want them to all be. All right. So I put the. This is row one that we have um, just finished. And row two, I previously sewed. So we're now gonna sew these two layers together. And they, are, they should be exactly the same length as each other, but the seams, the cross seams are not gonna line up because the squares are the blocks rather than not squares. The blocks are different sizes. So what I like to do is pin at the end. And then usually what I do to your point is that I will pin where the seam is on both sides. And then I'll go back and pin in between. In the middle, in yeah. Between uh -huh, them. You're bisecting the. I'm bisecting it, and I'm also making sure that it's even along the top, you know, because sometimes yeah. it wants to do this, and you know, I want to mm -hmm. put it, pull it together to make sure that it's. And you really can't have too many pins, you know. You want to, you don't want to. It's like clamps. Kind of like clamps, yeah. But you just want to make sure that it's pinned everywhere because you've got different. They weights. are sort of a type of clamp. All right, so now I'm ready to take this back over to the sewing machine and sew the seam. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna sew this long seam, which is very similar to the short seams, except that I'm gonna to have to be crossing those short seams. So you have so to make sure to keep the seam allowance open. I gotta open. make sure to keep the seam allowance open, and they're already pinned, but I, I don't wanna sew over the pins, and so, you know, I gotta keep track and watch what it is that I'm doing a little closer. Uh, 
I also have these gloves that are very handy. They have sticky fingers. And sometimes like I'm just now trying to slide this through and it's a little bit heavy. And so I'm gonna bring the weight up on my lap and I'm gonna use my one sticky hand because it helps to grip it. It helps it helps to grip to push it through. So now we have all four of the columns all sewn together. All the blocks of the quilt are sewn together. You have it sideways now. So it's finished. The top is. The top is finished. And now we're gonna move on to the quilt sandwich where we're going to put, layer this on top of the batting and the backing. All right, so it's very important when you're doing uh, the layers of the quilt that they all be perfectly flat because you don't want any creases or bumps in the backing. Um, and I am going to put this backing onto my very long quilting machine. There are very, there are several different methods to um, keep the, the back flat to make the sandwich. And in this particular case, I need to pin the the backing fabric to these rollers. They're called leaders, in order to help make it flat. What I did was I used to take the backing and I would tape it to a floor, either a linoleum floor or you know a tile floor where there are squares or a wooden floor, and tape it all the way around flat to the floor because it's very important that the back stay flat and then you can smooth the other two layers on top of the flat back. But in this particular case, this machine kind of helps to keep it flat. And then the important thing is that it's keep the same tension so as we're approaching here the seam, I had to sew a seam in this backing, that the seam be in the direction of the roller so that it's the thickness of the seam is going to be across the whole thing as opposed to a seam that would go in the other direction and bulk it up in one place. When we get this good and tight, then I put the brake back on so that the roller can't, can't move it. And the next step is to layer the batting, handed to me by my helpful assistant. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear I'm doing all the work here. I'm doing all the work. All right, and this this quilting machine, actually what they have, it has on it what's called a fixed horizontal. So I can put it there and then I screw it down. So all I have to do is pull it across and it does a complete it fixes, straight line. fixes it in this direction. That's correct. So now we can just pull it across and right. it's right. gonna sew a straight line and you're gonna use a basting stitch, which is just like a clamp or a tacking. It's not- It's holding uh, it down and it's also the where I will line up the quilt up to. But eventually that, that seam doesn't show or- No, I'll take it out. It's like a- It's just it's basted. A, it's basting, which is temporary sewing. That's correct. It is. It is. It's just the batting's eating it up. It's sweet. And it's important when you're sewing the individual um, or ironing on the interfacing on the individual blocks and then when you sew the blocks together that everything be flat and smooth and not with no wrinkles or you know sometimes when you're sewing you would ease mm -hmm. something in like a shoulder seam or something to ease it into fit and you can't do that with this because any kind of easing turns into creases when you're trying to quilt it. I like my flat. my duck kit pattern um, has corners right that you can choose to ease to make them like round or you can just make them square and have mm -hmm. them have a have a dimple and it's like right then it's, it's okay. forgiving right it's forgiving. right then it's okay i paid but lower than you but it's okay that's right? fine yep but the thing is that it 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 um what matters is that what you're doing at the beginning steps affects later steps so the quilting part to me is when you're actually stitching through all of the layers of the sandwich and it can be an overall design which i'm going to do or it could be very um there are patterns that you can use if you want to make flowers that are designed so they call them pan pan graphs so that you can kind of follow it along and then you might have like a like a swirl or a flower or a snowman that goes on to the next snowman and it can relate um, it can you can but it's completely separate layer from what's here and you can choose how to quilt your quilt you can choose what? how to quilt your quilt that's right Based quilt, on it but it's far, and it can interact with these seams or not. It can. Depending on. It can. And there are actually computers where you can program quilt designs and just press a button and it just does all the quilting Beep, for boop, you. Boop, boop, boop. I've not um, quilted a, a you know a traditional quilt on here yet, 
but they advise that you actually baste down the, down the sides when you're doing it. And then people have these, these like long threads across the top with like things hanging down to make sure that everything stays on a line the mm. whole time you're quilting. Mm -hmm. Something I don't have to do with the t-shirt quilt so much because they don't need to be as precise. They're actually kind of designed to not be so, so precise. That's, that's why this is a good, um, that, I think that's why I chose this to be my intro to quilting video, Mom, is yeah. that is that I, a t-shirt quilt is more forgiving than a traditional Correct. quilt. Yep. And it comes together faster because the t-shirts are bigger than right. traditional quilt blocks, yep. and it's a yep. gateway drug to <laughs> to <laughs> traditional quilting. Because you're like, because yeah. this is a little bit, I don't want to say easier, but it's like, it's it, easier. It's no, more it is forgiving. Easier. Yeah, no, it is easier. Less precision I, there is There was a, a woman on one of my so quilting. across the bottom? Yeah, at this end, the sides, or you know, what's left of the sides. Yeah. So what we have to so do is take out these pins, mm -hmm. and usually what I do is I take out like four and then leave one, so the whole thing doesn't like weight down at the same time. Oh, okay. You know, fall because yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. fall off, and I don't want it to all fall off at once and put strain on another part of I it. Understand. So. And then hold this up this way. So now, because we're going to have to, um, when this gets to the end. We have to unpin it. We have to unpin it from there too. Yeah, so but this is a dramatic shot of it unrolling. Dramatic from the shot. Because it's like, look at our finished quilt almost. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to take these basting stitches out and before I work on the binding. But this is also going to take a long time, so I don't know. You can just do a little bit of it, it's okay. I pull them out, and when I get to a certain point where I have like a long thing, Okay. Then you can pull it and you can, can do like a big section. But what I do once. is I do it in sections, like just like you said. So I do it like that, and when this is long enough, I can pull on it and pull out a whole section of thread at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then work on the other side for a little while. But... Oh, so we're in the land of potential huge mistakes then, right? Now that it's like a big sandwich, if and you were to mess it. this part up and yeah. cut the backing, yeah. you would be in trouble. Yeah. So, <laughs> what, like the high, the stakes get higher the further along you get in a project pretty much. like this. Yes, pretty much that's true. So I just have to make sure. I've definitely done that, not on a quilt, but on other yeah. things where I cut what and I, I need to cut. And I feel and I make sure that it's not there. And I take one of my very long rulers so that I can lay it down on here. And it's also a good way of, of like cutting the batting evenly to like try to line this up with the edge. And it's not going to be perfect because the seams draw it in a little bit, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm but to try not to cut the other part. And then I always do this. I'm always afraid, like you said. I've cut them before. <laughs> I don't quilt all the way up to the edge for this reason, so that the backing actually has a place to go. And you do this all the way around the whole quilt. I'm just gonna do this one side for demo purposes. Then what I do, before I turn it around, I do the same side again, and I cut the backing an inch and a half away from the edge. So I don't have to worry about screwing up the cutting now. All right, so here, we're here, and I've cut this an inch and a half wider. And I'm gonna, first I'm gonna press it on the ironing board all the way down, right even with the fabric, and then I'm gonna fold it again one more time over top, and then pin it, and then this is where it will be sewn. And that makes the raw edges go away, and you have a nice little frame on the edge and then that will be the end. Okay, so as soon as I finish doing what I just described on the edges all the way around, I'm gonna deliver it to Becky in New York City next week. Yay. This portion of the video is sponsored by Imprint. It's a visual learning app with engaging interactive lessons on all sorts of topics. The guides and courses are broken down into two minute lessons that make an excellent alternative to doom scrolling. I identify as a visual and experiential learner and Imprint's animated explanations really help me stay engaged and understand complex concepts quickly. It's something I can feel good about spending screen time on learning something new. Subject-wise, there's something for everyone, from psychology and philosophy to tech, science, finance, health, history, and more. Don't just take my word for it, Imprint's got over 30,000 five-star reviews. 
If you'd like to try Imprint for yourself, try it for free, and the first 200 of you to use my link will also get 20% off your annual membership. Go to imprintapp.com slash Becky Stern, and also the link is in the description. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads, subscribe to my email newsletter, and find me on your favorite social media network. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This video was made with support from my sponsors and with generous donations from viewers like you through Patreon and YouTube memberships.